And guess what the politicians in all these states heard from their constituents about the idea of putting a waste disposal site? Not in my backyard, hell no, and a whole lot of words I'm not going to use here. The program was canceled. Not only that, but the reports are not found in the DOE archives. I've looked. They're gone. I have found, however, references to them, and I finally found the document that includes this graph in a university archive in the state of Minnesota. You won't find it on a federal government website. It got disappeared. I mean, the program had gotten so far as identifying a whole bunch of specific sites, which guaranteed a whole lot of unhappy politicians. And there's a whole lot more voters over there than there are in places like Nevada. And what do you think they did? <laughs> no second repository program, no granite, uh-uh, go away, bang. 1987, Congress passed the Nuclear Waste Policy Act amendments that sidestepped the consensus approach. <clears throat> the first Nuclear Waste Policy Act had a big bake-off approach, 1982. Five years later, in part because of this granite business, gone. Congress and the President came in and said, eh, no, we didn't, we didn't really mean that. We were just kidding. 1987, Nuclear Waste Policy Act not only short-circuited the consensus process, but it has time bombs in it that are still there. So when you hear politicians talking about this now, they or their predecessors did this. There's things in the document that have a bias toward throwing away used fuel. There are things in the law that are a bias toward recycling. This is called compromise. And then there are biases built in for no action at all. The waste fund appropriations are required every year. So the federal government requires utilities to put money into a waste fund, which isn't any more real than Social Security. And it has to be appropriated every year by Congress signed by the President. Senator Reid in particular has made use of this to block progress on Yucca Mountain for the last decade, really. So this is official policy of the United States, and it's self-inconsistent. Why? Well, one of the reasons is that we have fractured in this country. Up till 1974, we had a consensus in this country of what to do with used nuclear fuel. We've now fractured three ways. There's the kill nuclear power camp. Those people have said I've had them say it to my face years ago. Don, you've had the same sort of discussion. They don't want to solve the problem. And we better admit that. They'll fight any path forward. Then there's the tolerate nuclear for the short term. And the current administration follows this camp. They don't want to recycle because it implies that nuclear is a long-term energy option. And it would be. And then, people like myself, I'm a nuclear engineer, I want to plan on nuclear for the long term. The answer is recycle, as I showed you earlier. But who's going to fight for it? I don't need it today. Uranium is fairly cheap. Thanks to the late 70s, industry does not have a financial incentive. The laws and rules were changed, so the industry has no financial incentive. And of course, why make a decision if I can kick the can down the road? Well, in the last few years, and now we're back to the future. Official government policy is to re-examine all the options again. Now, we looked at everything in the 80s. I, I, I give you a 300-page document that summarizes all this that I wrote. <clears throat> 
we're basically setting the clock back to the early 1980s. We're going to do it all again. I believe it was Einstein who said something along the lines of one definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again, expecting a different result. We already did this game. We know, we know how this movie plays out. Now, technically we've made progress. We now have different waste precedents that I told you about earlier. We now have both the precedents and the technology to do lots of waste disposal that we did not have in the 80s. So there's been progress from a technical standpoint. We certainly have better technology for separating used fuel and the folks over at the INL are responsible for a lot of that progress. And the inspection regime from the International Atomic Energy Agency has improved significantly. The best thing I've heard about the framework negotiated with the Iranians this week, by the way, it's two words you won't hear from most talking heads. Two words to watch for are the additional protocols. It take a while to explain what that means, but it basically gives the countries that signed the additional protocols gives the IAEA more right to come in and inspect facilities in your country. It's a legal set of agreements. The inspection regime has improved significantly over the last 30 years. Now some things have gone perhaps in a bad direction. The uranium enrichment technology has improved. That makes it easier for a country like Iran to move forward. It does mean that, again, uranium and plutonium are both ways to a bomb. Both of them are more attractive, if you want a bomb, than recycling the transuranic material that's essentially harder to work with. And the U.S. has more than enough used fuel to fill Yucca Mountain, even if it opens up. It's also more than enough used fuel to last the lifetime of a first recycling plant. So I can build Yucca Mountain, I can build a first recycling plant, I got enough used fuel today to take advantage of that investment, which is a lot different than it was in 1982. If anyone was stupid enough to make, make me in charge of any of this, this is what I would do. I'd force having the discussion, including the history people want to overlook. Americans are crappy when it comes to understanding history. <clears throat> I lived through some of this, so I, uh, I remember quite a bit of it. Those who don't study history are doomed to repeat it, and that's what we're going to do. Recycle all the transuranics, not just plutonium. It's the least proliferation way of recycling and has the residual, the least residual waste hazards. Separate the waste, develop an exit ramp. The kill nuclear crowd will never be happy with any approach. Forget them. But that second group that views nuclear as only a short-term problem, some of them might be persuaded if we could demonstrate a way to stop recycling once we started it so that it's not a permanent commitment. Change the incentives and then create some non-government entities like the Nature Conservancy or Tennessee Valley Association to take care of some of these activities. Because those of you who've done research in your careers know that when government policy changes every month, every six months, every year, you never get anything done. So you have to find a way to isolate yourself from the erratic behavior in Washington. And private trust funds are a proven way of doing that. See, every nuclear plant in the United States has to have a trust fund set up to decommission the plant. There have been budget rating parties in South Carolina and California that went after that money. And the budget rating parties from the state legislatures have failed. Private trust in individual states have withstood the test of legal assault. That's the legal way of dealing with where to put the money. 
I love it if we could ever have this plan come together. It is solvable. I hope I've shown you that it's not just a technical problem. It's not just a political problem. It's a mishmash. And we don't know how to deal with that in the United States. There are really good reasons to recycle. We're doing some of the right things, but not all. And our country does not know how to deal with long-term problems that involve technology and politics. And the Blue Ribbon Commission, which is the dressed up group to, that formulated, you know, what are we going to do? Well, let's look at a bunch of options and so forth. At best, their recommendations deserve a chuckle because I could have taken documents from the 1980s that said the same thing, and it would have been cheaper. So we've got a challenge. Those of us who want nuclear power to take its rightful place as a long-term energy option for our children, our grandchildren, and generations yet unborn, we're gonna to have to do something along those lines because the current game isn't gonna get us there. It's just not going to get us there, because we already tried it, and it didn't work. Questions? How much is the fossil fuel industry uh, mucking up the works for them? So I'm not sure they're bothering with us now, but I sure, I sure couldn't tell you. The utilities, of course, most of them have nuclear. They have coal. So the utilities won't do that because they would be, you know, shooting at their own body parts. The coal mining associations are probably opposed to this. Whether they're doing anything funding-wise, that would be pure speculation. How much of the energy in the United States is, is run by nuclear fuel? Nineteen percent of the electricity today. How much? Nineteen percent. Of electricity. We, nuclear, of course, provides 0% of transportation. As we get to plug-in cars and other plug-in vehicles, that'll start to change. But right now, transportation is almost 100% oil, and will be until you electrify transportation. Up in the back. How much of the nuclear fuel in the world is being reprocessed? I don't have an exact figure. Given the countries that are working in this direction, the, the largest nuclear program in the world is in the United States. The second largest is France. We are, we are not, they are. After that, it's probably Russia. I'm going to say around somewhere between a third and a half. But I, I, it'd be an interesting number. I've never calculated it. Yes. Yes. But they don't have to get them to stop. Well, I'll take France as an example. The French will sometimes tell you, tell us, Americans, that the Americans are cursed by having too many energy options. We have the luxury of doing them all wrong. <laughs> France has no oil to speak of, not too much coal. They build nuclear power plants. What is it? Close to 80% of their electricity comes from nuclear, whereas it's 19 in the United States. Countries that don't have many options solve the problems of the options they do have. John. Well, certainly France is. Russia is. South Korea is gearing up to. They are not currently. Japan has a large facility on the Northern Island that is in the advanced startup phases. Uh, we are not. China, I don't know where China stands, to be honest. China is gearing up. China is gearing up. Yes, but that's phasing down. Canada is not. Now, the reason Canada and the United Kingdom are not 
is in part because they use a different type of fuel. The numbers are different than what I showed here. There is less plutonium in the used fuel, either the gas reactor Magnox or the Candus in Canada. And so it's less material recovered for each separation of used fuel. So there's less economic incentive in those two countries' fuel cycles. Yes. Yeah, Japan Japan's well along in their, their plans. Questions, comments, artillery shells. Has there been a, a definitive study of, uh, of Fukushima where, where they actively looked at, they had prior knowledge that this would fail if they would have paid attention to the information. Has there been a study analyzing why they ignored those things? There's been a lot of studies. Um, I would not claim expertise in that area. A couple of things I can, can tell you that are pretty well known. Fukushima killed close to 20,000 people. 